paraphrase Romans 12, 13 to 15, I thank God for each of us. I am eager to preach the gospel to you, for I have a responsibility to the church and the unchurched, both to the city and the suburbs, both to the wise and the foolish. And my prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to our Creator God, my rock and my redeemer. I want you to pray with me this morning on the topic, Getting in God's Face. This story we find in the Gospel of Matthew about Jesus and a Canaanite woman is one of the most troubling stories in the Bible. I mean, we often say Jesus is both fully human and divine, and we love to tell stories about the divinity of Jesus, the Christ who heals, the Christ who turns water into wine, the Christ who is all-knowing. But this text is about the human Jesus. And we know humans are flawed creatures. They get angry. They say hurtful things. So this is a troubling text because it gives us a glimpse of the human side of Jesus. It gives us a glimpse inside of the Jesus who was born in the hood, the Jesus who was the son of a working man. This text gives us a glimpse of the human side of Jesus, the Jesus who was born under a cloud of rumor and gossip, the Jesus who was Mary's baby, Joseph's maybe. <laughs> this story it's the only time I am a little uncomfortable with Jesus. I am uncomfortable with how he speaks to this woman. He calls her a dog. A dog. And you know, in any language, that is a filthy insult. So why would religious people feel comfortable putting this language in the Bible? I think because it adds power to what this woman does. So first, let's look at the setting of this story. Jesus has just been engaged in a debate with the Pharisees, what we discussed last week, over the disciples' failure to wash their hands ceremoniously before eating. And Jesus tells them <laughs> that what makes you clean or unclean is what comes out of your mouth that that defines a person. He says, whatever comes out of the mouth comes forth from the heart, and then your words defile a person, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. So, so interesting, in this week's text, we have a contrast, because here we see the humanity of Jesus. In Matthew, the account gives us a little more detail. In chapter 15 in Matthew, it says, Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he responds, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she says, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answers her, yes, woman, great is your faith. And her daughter was healed instantly. So, you know, the Jesus in this story is kind of like us. Have you ever said one thing, and then you turn around and do the exact opposite thing? You haven't, I do that all the time. So Jesus has just said our words defile us. He has just said that the words that comes out of your mouth make us unclean, nasty, and then he turns around and calls this woman a dog. 
Well, to understand why, you have to understand who the Canaanites are. To call her a Canaanite is to stress that she is a foreigner, making her one of their hated enemies, and to stress her ethnic origin from a people who were thought to be among Israel's most dangerous enemies. For the Canaanites, gods were known for their immoral worship rituals, often using temple prostitutes. In fact, Hebrew men were known to be especially attracted to these Canaanite women because they were thought to be so sexually experienced. So here comes this woman from a hated race of people who lives on the wrong side of town, who is loud. <laughs> and in Matthew it says she comes shouting after Jesus, hey Jesus, wait up! Yo, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> and everyone knows those Canaanite women are freaks. <laughs> and she confronts Jesus. And she knows people don't like her. And she knows what people say about her and her people. But she comes after Jesus anyway. She comes after Jesus anyway because her daughter is ill. And this is her chance for her daughter to be healed. That's why this is such a powerful lesson about faith because it's a story of a woman who is not perfect. It's a story about a woman who is so courageous, so outrageous, so bold, that she alone challenges Jesus to live up to what he says and who he says he is. She gets in his face. And she isn't afraid to get in his face. She stands firm in her faith and she ends up converting the heart of Jesus. What an example. Because she dares to get in God's face, transformation happens. So back to our story. So what is Jesus' response when this loud woman comes after him, demanding his attention? First of all, he says he doesn't even answer her. And then the disciples are so annoyed, they ask Jesus, send her away because she keeps shouting after us. But the language she uses touches the heart of Jesus. The language that Jesus has just told us in the previous story informs us of what is in the heart of a person. One of the translations says, she comes shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Have mercy on me, son, Lord of David. Have mercy on me is the language of the Psalms. Have mercy on me is the language of prayer. Plus, she addresses Jesus as Lord, son of David. She acknowledges her trust in his divine authority. Who would have thought that an outsider, an enemy of Israel, no less, would address Jesus with the language of prayer? How would an outsider, a heathen, even know that Jesus is Lord? So here through the language that she uses, we begin to get a glimpse of the heart of this woman. So let's put a pen right there. Through the language she uses, we get a glimpse of her heart. And last week we talked about what comes out of your mouth and reveals what is harbored in your heart. And I want you to just take a moment to think about the language you use, especially when you're angry, hurt, you feel disrespected. What does your language convey about your inner soul? Do you respond with language of the Psalms? You know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but 
what, what does your language convey about who you really, really are? I like the example uh, Dr. Dwayne Dyer uses when he says, you know, you really get to know a heart of a person when you see how they respond when they are angry, when they are squeezed. When you're squeezed, what comes out? Is it venom? Is it poison? Is it reconciliation? So through her language, although she is socially despised and disrespected, she moves with the confidence of her faith, even when it is uncomfortable, even when she's around people who don't like her. And here are the disciples and Jesus moving, moving through the crowd. And here is this woman crying behind them, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. And this is where Jesus gets nasty. This is where the hood comes out. In the hood, we say he signifies, which means he cuts her verbally. He lets her know that his ministry is for Israel, not for foreigners. He responds, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this woman persists. And then she kneels before him, which means she stops him from walking any further. She kneels before him, which suggests that she is worshiping him. And the verb tense used in the original Greek language suggests that she kneels over and over and over. And now assuming the posture of prayer in front of him, she says, Lord, help me. Demonstrating to all her confidence and dependence on Jesus. By her words and actions, we know this woman is absolutely certain that Jesus can heal her daughter. <clears throat> but this Jesus, the human Jesus, is not moved. Irritated. So that's the hard part of this text. This is where even Jesus shows he can be annoyed and have a hard heart. Even Jesus here is caught with his compassion down. And even Jesus uses offensive language. And nowhere in the gospel tradition does Jesus address a sincere petitioner with such harsh language. His answer to this loud, heathen, foreign woman at his feet, bowing down, asking him for help, at his feet, asking him to be who he has told the whole world he is. There she is, asking him not to be a respecter of persons. Asking him to see all of humanity inside the protection of God. And his answer is, it's not fair to take the children's food, Israel's food, and throw it to the dogs. Hmm. I marvel at this, this woman in this story because I think I would have found it hard to be there on my knees in front of this man pleading and begging after being called a dog. Kind of my stuff sad, but come on. But she doesn't move. After being ignored, she doesn't move. After being scorned, she doesn't move. After being insulted, she doesn't move. In fact, she answers his insult. Yes, Lord. I may be loud. Yes, Lord. I may be an outsider. Yes, Lord. You may not think I'm worthy, but still, I believe. You are worthy and to be praised. Yes, Lord, she answers. Yet she 
answers, yet even the dogs eat the food that falls from their master's table. She answers, even the dogs are part of God's blessing. Even the dogs get some of God's abundance. And here comes the best part of this text. Jesus is converted. Amen. Jesus is changed. For Jesus understands that she stands before him, a woman on the street with the Psalms in her heart. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. At all times, I will bless the Lord, even, Lord, when you're having a bad day. I will bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Your praise shall continuously be in my mouth. And Jesus is changed. For even on a bad day, when he is caught with his compassion down. Here is a woman in front of him in the words of the psalmist saying, in thee, O Lord, I put my trust in you. And Jesus' heart is changed. And he responds, woman, how great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And the text says, her daughter was healed. Jesus was changed by a woman who had confidence in him even when he wasn't acting so holy. Jesus was changed by a woman whose faith could not be shaken by being ignored or even insulted. Her confidence, her faith in what the Lord could do was so strong that Jesus had to say, woman, how great is your faith? I believe this woman is the perfect model for activism today. Be sure of the promises of God. And don't let the limitations that other people put on you, don't let what other people say about you, take you off your square. Remain prayerful, remain respectful, and persist, and get in God's face. And even God will have to reconsider your petition. In fact, there is a tradition of arguing with God and demanding a response. This is the experience of Abraham, of Job, or the prophets, and more of the Psalms and prayers of lament where believers take God by the collar and say, Lord, why do the wicked prosper? Do something. Lord, why are my enemies still alive? Do something. <laughs> Lord, I believe, but will you comfort me? Lord, don't let those people who look down on me have authority over me and continue to oppress me. Lord, scripture is full of people of faith challenging God to be who God says God is supposed to be. So as I close, I want you to ask yourself, what would cause you to endure insult and still remain prayerful. What would cause you to show your faith to a hostile world? What would cause you to stay in God's face until you got the healing you came for? It's important to realize what made her faith so great is that she didn't come asking for anything for herself. And she didn't care how she looked to others while she did it. She didn't care what people said about her, what courage. You know, being an advocate for a sick person 
for another person is not easy. Being an advocate for a sick child, a child who misbehaves, it's not easy. Being an advocate for poor communities is not easy. Don't tear down our homes. Don't close our schools. Don't close our hospitals. Being an advocate for those in prison is not easy. Being an advocate for those being killed on our streets is not easy. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Being an advocate for a more, more compassionate government is not easy. Being an advocate for those who are homeless is not easy. Being an advocate for the elderly, for the mentally ill, for those who need drug treatment is not easy. But this text shows us the power of demanding in love that people be who they were created to be. A powerful lesson in this story is that people will live up to your expectations. What transformation would occur in our lives if we were like this woman and expected the best of someone even when they were having their worst day? In the face of indifference or even hostility, I wonder what would happen if we responded with child of God, or brother or sister, be patient with me. I wonder what would happen if just sometimes we responded with respect rather than anger. Bless you anyway. Could we cause transformation to happen? Could we cause some people to change what was in their hearts. This text shows us a human Jesus. The question is, can we still believe in a Jesus once we see his flawed humanity? I think that's the only Jesus we can trust. We can only trust a Jesus who responds to our sincere cries for transformation, heal us, save us, deliver us. The Bible teaches we have not because we ask not. I believe we absolutely can trust in Jesus who hears our faith and confidence. We can trust a Jesus who can take us getting in his face.